Today, I'm going to make the most important battle pirates video I've ever made. This is how to do PvE for 100% free in battle pirates. Hey everyone, Derpy here. Welcome back to another battle pirates video. A quick outline of what we're going to go over because this is a fairly long and complicated video. I'm going to try and keep it as short as I can and entertaining, but today I'm going to talk about how people such as myself are able to build a PvE fleet for free in the two month raid cycle. If you don't do this and don't plan well, then yes, you're going to suffer. But if you do this, then you can definitely get it done out of the way okay. I do put a lot of work into this video by masking nothing else other than just watching and enjoying, and I will cover a few important things. If you are looking at this on YouTube, I do have the time codes in the YouTube description, which should set up segments in the video so you can use the scroll bar to click through to what you're most interested in, but I think all of it is especially important. Really important things are the 12 baby steps to win, as well as the final note on upgrades and what I'm calling the number one mistake players make in Battle Pirates. Let's go ahead and get started. As a background, this will take some time to go ahead and if you're going from zero or if you're just barely hanging on Battle Pirates, it will take some time to get to caught up, especially if you are a new player. This is only focused on PvE. PvP is a different story because it changes much more, whereas PvE and events and doing things like Assault, Skirmish, Siege, all this stuff is way more cyclical and is extremely predictable, so much that I could probably tell you the next year or so worth of events, maybe even more than that, with fairly high confidence. And like I said, this is going to take some time, it's going to be complicated, but you can do every raid cycle for free if you follow these. This is what I'm going to outline here, it's a plan. By the way, this is not something I invented. Many other high-level players have developed this and have used this as well. Alliances know this. I'm just trying to make sure everyone's on the same page and I'm helping people go through this. Starting out with, there is a step one to get started, and this is garrison. You need to have a garrison fleet. Since... Pretty much time immemorial the last five plus years, people have been saying you need to have a garrison fleet. Garrison is the number one priority. This is because it gets you number one for second mission tokens, which can be used to speed up your ship builds. At the beginning, when tokens were introduced, they were sort of optional, maybe a fun thing, but these days the exact build is based around using tokens, and ships are giving you with the build time expected you'll get tokens every single week. Right now, you can get them for like 100 points in the Forsaken Mission in the chest in the tier of price pool 4, price pool 5, for 100 points when you can hit one target and get like 5,000. They are extremely easy to get. It's the most important thing for this to work. And the other part of Garrison Fleet is you can also use the various different things to go and get go ahead and get raid tech for your actual holes so kicksai will often release every single forsaken mission you have to go ahead and get limited tech this might be armors this might be specials but you're going to have to get something pretty much all the time to go ahead and equip your raid fleets with that for example in the recent raid series we had to equip some corrosive and missile armor to our zealots this is only a limited item and there was no unlimited equivalent there just wasn't anything like it now, you need to enter with a fairly good fleet to start out with and eventually get caught up with. You need to be using the top characters in fleet, but for a time being, maybe a month or two, if you are still using the older version of the garrison fleet, so for example, right now as I'm recording this in 2020, the top fleet is the Everest and the second fleet is the Praetorian. In two years, a year from now, the top fleet might be some other brand new thing and Everest will be secondary. That secondary hole can work as a placeholder for a very limited period of time, but it is extremely important that you go ahead and get the top garrison fleet as quickly as possible. Takeaway here is tokens every single week. Okay, now that we're on a good baseline, let's move on to a timeline. This slide might seem a little bit complicated, but it is hopefully going to make some more sense after I go through it. The rate cycle, as I said, is on a two month cycle, so every two months things repeat. People might define differently what the first month and second month is, but I'm looking at this from the perspective of building your ships and the timeline for building your ships. So it all starts with pillage number one. Pillage number one is where you get various different tech, limited tech for a hole that's about to come out. And I will go over this as an example in the next few slides, which should make some more sense. Once you get all this tech here, you really can't put it on anything. You get about 10 limited weapons, maybe 5 limited specials, which are often engines at this time, of, at, this time at least in the game. And then a week later, you have the raid. 
this is the most important event of this entire video. In this first raid, you get the new hull that you're going to be using for the next PvE cycle, as well as some various tech for it, including a normal regular weapon and another normal special. This does use this cycle of ships that the last ships in the cycle, so you use the most up-to-date thing to get what to get what's going to be the next most up-to-date thing. The most important thing you can do is get the new hole from this raid one and start building blanks instantly and use some safe for sake mission tokens. I will go over that in numeric steps later, so stay tuned for that. Then once you build those four blanks and have them going, you're going to go ahead into VXP Weekend 1. VXP Weekend is where you can rank up your ships and get them veterinary experience points, which makes them four times better mathematically. They turn a little bit faster and have four times faster reload, which is really, really important. You don't really have a time, if, especially if you're not spending money, to go ahead and build them out to test them in these targets. You really just need to build four blanks and suicide them in this target. A week after VXP Weekend, we have a TLC, maybe two weeks after that, we have a TLC that comes out. This is a time-limited campaign and uses the previous version of that hole. So if it is an Assault class raid, you're going to use the last year's Assault ship. We will, again, go over an example of all of these. And this gets you all previous tech, so pretty much all previous tech. It's going to have the regular weapon, the, uh, 10 more of the limited weapons, as well as having some limited specials in there. And it is very, very important to do primarily because of the tokens that you get to go ahead and apply to those ships. That is timeline of events number one. Now at this point, after this DLC, your ship should be fairly well built and we move on to pillage number two. Pillage number two is where we get the flagship for this raid fleet that you're building, which is pretty important. So it's important to save some, for some forsaken mission tokens for this again. And this uses, as, I, as is listed here, garrison ships, which is your same as your Forsaken Mission Fleet, and then the ship from two cycles ago. That's a pretty important note there. Then we have raid number two, which is far less important than raid number one because it's generally speaking miscellaneous prizes. Nothing new really needed to stay caught up in PvE. It's things like maybe there's some PvP turrets, maybe a defender ship, something that's not really important. And after that, we do a VXP weekend number two, which is nowhere near as important because there is no ship that really that you have to rank or upgrade or what we call skull. And then after that, we have TLC number two, which is the exact same, no changes whatsoever as TLC number one. And generally speaking, at this time, your ships are, your raid fleet is almost already completely built out and you only need to get the tokens, generally speaking, the upgrade tokens from this. At this time, you should have pretty much a full fleet, and the cycle starts over again. You go back to the first, you go back to the raid number one, use that raid fleet you just built to earn a brand new one. If this seems somewhat repetitive, that's because it is, and that's why we call this the hamster wheel. Great, let's go ahead and move on to some example, examples. I'm using this in November, October of 2020 as an example. Starting out with pillage number one, we used the Zealots, which were an old Assault class ship, as well as the Everest, which were the current top tier garrison fleet in the Forsaken mission, as well as pillage to go ahead and get two different things. We had a limited special in the FTL engine, and we also could get 10 blacklight missiles. There were a few other things, some older tech, maybe some upgrade kits offered in this event, but in terms of the PVE raid fleet you really needed to go ahead and get, these were the important things. If you happen to miss out on pillage number one and don't get these, your fleet will just be 10-20% weaker, which is not a huge deal, although everything matters. Now let's move into the next version of this example, which is the first raid in raid number one, as you saw on the slides. In October of 2020, this was called Powder Keg, and in this you used the Gladius fleet, which was at this point the most up-to-date raid fleet to earn the Photon ECM, which is the brand new raid fleet and is what you're going to be building out now in this example. You could also get just to the right of that the Blacklight Missile, or rather the Strobe Missile, which is the regular unlimited weapon. You could just get this thing, or you go ahead and get a total of 40 Blacklight Missiles from this event and previous ones and the TLC that are coming up to get 40 total weapons across your fleet. But if you didn't have that time, didn't want to go out and get a couple million points for a few weapons, you can use the Strub Missile. It's another situation where your fleet will be about 10 to 20% weaker if you don't if you don't use the limited missile and you use the regular missile instead. We also had a few other specials in this event, 
in terms of the Wave Pulse Warhead, which was a regular unlimited special in this raid event, as well as Penetrative Battery 2, which was a limited special in this raid event. This is the most important event, has a whole bunch of prizes, and what you need to do day one is start building photons as soon as possible. Redeem them day one, day two, and start building four blanks. That's what we had to do. And I will summarize this later, so don't worry about it if you're taking notes or anything like that. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next event. At this point, you would hopefully have four blank photons built, and you would just suicide rank them in targets, hit the thing, let them die, after you've built just four blank ones. You can do this because you use one week of Forsaken Mission tokens saved up in token form, actually opening in your inventory, another week that was held going into that raid saved in your chest form, and even potentially one week of Forsaken Mission tokens you get this very first weekend between the raid and the XP weekend. Your goal right now is to keep building photons 24-7, if at all possible. Then we move on to the TLC number one, which in this case, in October-November of 2020, was called Cyber Strike. The name's not important, but you use the older, sa older same version of that different... You use the old version in, of that whole class, so in this example, it was the Zealots as an Assault class hole, redeeming the Photon, the new Assault class hole. And the prizes I put up on screen here, as you can see, it's a whole bunch of different tokens in terms of VXP tokens, if you happen to have one ship only half rank, also a bunch of different build tokens, eight of those total, as well as five upgrade tokens, as well as some upgrade kits, which are pretty important, and then 10 of the Blacklight Missiles were available at the end too. Notice there are some prizes that are repeats, so if you happen to not have gotten the FTL engine there, it is in the bottom left corner, as well as the regular blueprint missiles in the top left corner as well. So there are a few things that you can get, although you might not have enough stuff to actually build and put on your hole if you don't redeem that stuff early, but it often does come back and is still available for you if you still need it later. Then moving on, we have pillage number two, which was the November pillage in this example. And if you remember from the slide, this is where you use your Everest fleet, which is your garrison's fleet, as well as a new, a new rotation of an older PVE ship to go ahead and get the Photon ECM, which is the flagship for the current ray fleet. That's what pillage number five is all about, as, we, as well as maybe picking up another 10 extra limited weapons if you are someone who can get the extra few million points for these limited weapons. Then the event that we move into next is again a repeat cycle. It is raid number two. This happened in November of 2020 to be called Electrical Storm. And in this, you use your fleet that you just got to go ahead and get, a, get random prizes. Ones that are important for PVE and getting your ships upgraded now are some upgrade tokens which could be pretty important, but this is a fairly minor raid. This is, at this point, you've just gotten a fleet, you spent 30 days getting different prizes, different upgrade tokens for it, upgrade kits for it, refitting it, looking at targets, looking at builds, and you've used it in this first raid, or this second raid in this, in this what I'm calling a cycle here. After this event was a VXP weekend, which really doesn't do anything, there's nothing really to rank up, you've had your fleet built up already and you're using it, and you can easily skip this one if you want to. The last event here in my example series is a TLC number two, the exact same as the first time around. At this point, the upgrade tokens and or upgrade kits will really be the only good thing for top end players. Those are eight example events showing through a walkthrough that were going through the two different slides of the month one and the month two I had put up earlier. Again, keep in mind that some people might have the month one and two squished around. I went from it from month one being the month where you win the ship and month two being the one where you actually use the ship. So there's a few different ambiguities there that people might describe differently. Just hope that you know the difference and know the general cycle. Let's now answer the question, what should you be building? Number one, as I said, is always build a garrison fleet. Number two is build the newest PvE fleet that you can get done before its last useful raid. So if I were entering the game at a period of time, or I came back to the game, and I had the blueprints, I would not start building a siege fleet if the siege raid is in one week or is already over. I'm going to go ahead and get the next thing. After siege is assault, after assault is skirmish, skirmish and after skirmish is siege. After you build the garrison, build the next useful PvE thing that you can actually get. You may be asking yourself, that sounds great, it sounds like there's a cycle that I can keep building and I know how to do that if I already have the deck, but how do I get on it? I'm so glad you asked. How to enter as a new or returning player to a cycle. This is basically how do you get the second to most useful fleet so you can earn the most useful fleet. 
to start out with, you can do the beginner campaigns. This is in the campaign menu in the top right of your screen if you are in your base. At least it kicks ice, keeps updating them. This will give you three or four fleets of things that are fairly useful and will give you entry level stuff into the Forsaken mission, as well as one of each of the whole classes of Assault, Skirmish, and Siege. You can also ask for a free fleet of the almost current ship, so you're not going to get the best fleet out there, especially if people just want it as well, because that wouldn't really make sense, but you can sometimes get the fleet that's a month or two old, and you can ask for that. It's often given out. Kickside does do offers and giveaways, and sometimes gives away five free ships to every single player in their game. But if they haven't had that and you don't have one yourself, you can go ahead and ask politely for that, especially if there was an offer recently. Failing everything else, use a garrison fleet or older ships, such as your Praetorians or Everest in the example I'm going for, to get the top Forsaken Mission fleet, which should be available in the Forsaken Mission, and then enter to Pillage number 2. You can go back to the slides and go through that, and use all that to get the top hole, to get, to get the Assault hole, if all, the best hole that's out there in Pillage number 2, or Pillage number 1, whichever one is there. Use it to get that best ship, and build start building that you have like 40 days to do it and use it for the next cycles raid number one so that's how you can enter the hamster wheel as a new or returning player and once you're on there you have to keep going with a preset formula that remains very consistent and this formula is right here i've called this 12 baby steps to win pve and i'm going to read through them totally feel free to take a screenshot here or anything else like that or come back to this timestamp about 16 and a half minutes in through this video anytime you possibly want number one is get some limited tech early in pillage number one if at all possible it will give you a small advantage in terms of having a limited special limited weapon whatever else number two and very important one here is two weeks before the raid where you earn the new hole store two weeks of forsaken mission tokens this is super 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 important and is what allows you to get four blanks done by BXP week weekend and start building them. That's with number three, as soon as possible, raid number one, redeem this new hole and start building blanks. That will lead you to the point in time where you enter VXP weekend and you can rank up four ships. Remember, just build the hole straight blank to start out with. Don't equip them with anything other than a, a single thud one, which has a one second build time. You do this to rank them up in VXP targets because when they're ranked, they are at least four times better. Step number five here is start refitting 99% sure components on your ships. This could be four weapons that you already redeemed that are the limited ones, or if you're not getting those, just put the regular weapons on there and some specials that the community in general agrees with that make sense. I, generally speaking, try to put out some videos going over what I'm pretty sure actually works on the holes at about that time period. Step number six is keep doing the Forsaken mission every single week to get limited tech and limited armor as well as different build tokens. Keep getting doing the Forsaken mission because the Forsaken mission is where you get your prizes, some of your prizes, to equip your raid fleet with. It's really important and you should have, kept, you should have been doing this the month before also if at all possible. If you don't have something, there is usually an older replacement that works fairly well, but it will be about, you guessed it, 10-20% to 20 worse. Step number seven is do all price packs of the TLC for tokens and tech if you missed it, if at all possible. Some of these TLCs Kicksize Mode putting out recently have been fairly hard, so it might be frustrating, but do as many price packs as at all possible, get as many prizes as you can, because this gets you a whole bunch of different tokens in terms of build tokens, VXP tokens, and if you missed out on any prizes, you can go ahead and get them in this TLC. Some people, including myself, might not even get the regular weapon because we're so certain it will be in this TLC because Kixai is very cyclical and it is a hamster wheel doing the same exact thing but with different names every single two months. Now, step number eight here is save the other two weeks of Forsaken Mission tokens, maybe from the week right after the raid. Start saving those because you're going to need to build your flagship. This is going to come in pillage number two and has a pretty high build time, so it's really important you get that done and you save some actual tokens for it. You often have a lot more build time left over than you actually need or that, than you actually think you need because it's really, really important and you maybe should spend some time saving those tokens instead for the flagship or even upgrading your fleet if you are a high level player who knows what you're doing and are certain about it. On step 9, at this point, you should be continuing to build your raid fleet and you should have a nearly finished build, maybe short a few armors, a few weapons on one, one or two ships. Uh, maybe you're still only halfway complete on a few of them even. 
Number 10 is consider saving a few one-day tokens so that you can watch guinea pigs who do raid streams such as myself test in the first hour of the raid. For example, if I'm going to build a ship and I'm watching someone else, maybe I'm not sure if I want to use a certain special, a super high evade special, or maybe a evade special that gives me some combat speed as well, but some lower evade. So as a strategy game, you're trying to decide what to put on. Maybe save some tokens, say four one-day build tokens across your four regular ships, and go ahead from the TLC you just did and watch to see what people are doing in raid one so you know that you're getting the best possible build, trying to avoid doing some refits. Ideally, in a perfect world, we'd see these targets before and know it's going to work, but we're not living in a perfect world. At step number 11 here, maybe it's the week before the raid, before the first raid, you're going to want to spend some time upgrading ships with various different tokens from the TLC, as well as some time if you do have left over. Also consider that it may be worth it to upgrade your ships all to U1, maybe just one of them up to U3. And it may be worth it to do this instead of putting on this last armor. If you want to say, as an example, going to give you 20,000 survival, and the armor put you could put on would only give you 5,000 survival, it sounds better to do everything up to U1. So consider some upgrades there in the final week before the first raid. Step number 12 is at this point you should have a fleet greater than 90% done for free. I've done this myself extremely repeatedly. Everyone does it. It works. And this is maybe even up to 100% done with no coins, just planning for the first raid. That's all you have to do. You have to plan and know what, to, what you're going to do. At this point, if you're going and at, you plan through raid one, maybe you get some more upgrade tokens, maybe some build tokens to finish things out. Continue to upgrade your fleet for raid two, which is a lot easier in the second month, way less pressure, and save those build tokens to go back to step number one and repeat in the next two month cycle. This is the most important slide here. But there are some tips. I'm now going to talk about ways to reduce your build time, which is again equally important. As I said on the last slide, always build a hole 100% blank and then refit tech on. This is because you get refit reductions. For example, I have the lab times listed here, as well as different R&D times, research and development. It's in the top left of your screen if you haven't done it already, but you should. It gives you about a 10% reduction in terms of time on a few different things. This is because if I just build a hole that takes four days and a weapon that takes one day, that will take five days total. If I build the hole and then refit the weapon on, it will take that four days for the hole, then I get that 10% savings refit bonus when I'm actually applying, or 20% savings refit bonus when I'm actually applying that weapon. So it's really, really important to do this. Always build a blank, a hole 100% blank, and then slowly refit things on. Just make sure that you're trying to time things maybe so you're awake when the builds end, that things are timed pretty tightly. And if you are just starting this day one, your labs I pictured here may not be fully upgraded. Your advanced naval weapons and, and intelligence lab are really, really important. They're the things that actually give you some reduction. There are a few other bonuses you get from the other things in this picture, but it is especially important that you make sure you are upgrading those lab buildings because they do give you some, some reductions in terms of time building. Also, and this isn't picture on here, make sure your dock is at the highest total level because that's really important in terms of weight because your fleet is generally speaking designed to fill completely out your dock and Kickside does that so it happens automatically. If you don't have the highest dock level, it really should come up even before all of these. And now it's time for the number one mistake players make in Battle Pirates. This is upgrading old ships instead of building new ships. If we have upgrade levels, which just make your ships maybe up to twice as good at the very total, you should not upgrade those old ships when we have new ships to build. For example, there's no reason to keep for me to keep upgrading my Gladius fleet when I should instead be building the next fleet in the raid cycle, which is the, in this case, example I'm using the photons. Always build the new PVE thing over upgrading the old one. You do not need to get every single hole up to U1, not, not U2, not, you don't even need to get them all up to X1. Do not upgrade old things over building new things. Please, 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 please build the new things. This has been a somewhat long video, but as I said, it was especially important. If you have clarifying questions, maybe you're watching this the day I post it, maybe you're watching it a year or two later. Hopefully I'm still around and making Battle Pirates videos for this. But if you do have questions, go ahead and leave a comment below in the comment section. I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible, or hopefully someone else will. Other useful resources are also the Kickside Battle Pirates Forum, the Forsaken Council Facebook page, as well as the Battle Pirates Discord has been getting quite a bit better recently. 
There are a few helpful things there, and this has been my video on how to do PVE 100% for free in terms of building it. All you have to do is put in some planning and put in a little bit of time. If you just spend five minutes a day, you can't do all this, but it is 100% possible. I hope this video helped. If I did earn a like on this video, that'd be greatly appreciated if you did like it. If you don't, you can do this like fine by me. And thank you to everyone who is a channel member. Click that join button next to the subscribe icon. It just helps me out a little bit. Anyway, this is Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.